So we're going to talk today about how to structure a basic essay um, in the context of how that relates to the Schaefer paragraphs we've practiced so far this year. So on the left, we have an example of a paragraph that follows the Schaefer format we've been practicing. And on the right is an example of what that same prompt would look like if we wrote a three paragraph essay on it instead. So let's look first at the Schaefer paragraph. The prompt is in one paragraph, describe one theme you found in Gary Soto's short story, seventh grade, and how you saw it developed in the plot. So the first thing we would wanna do here is decide on a theme that we see in the story that we could write about. And then remember a theme is a full sentence, a statement of truth. It's the author's message and um, it's different from a moral or advice for how to live, but it's more of a statement that people can look at and see how that is a truth that is shown in the story and also something that they can connect to real life. Our topic sentence in a paragraph answers the prompt and states the main idea of our paragraph. So we want to start by identifying that theme. For example, one theme in Gary Soto's short story, Seventh Grade, is that it is better to be yourself than to try to be someone else. And honestly, with this story, there are a lot of themes you could choose, and you could even defend this one both ways, right? But we're going to look at how we've chosen to defend this particular theme. So we go from the topic sentence to our concrete detail. And for this, you want to give specific facts and examples from the text. Often we do this by quoting or paraphrasing specific passages. The more relevant and specific your evidence is to your topic, the better your argument will be. So we begin by introducing and giving context, then we quote or paraphrase, and then we cite our source before explaining it. So in red here, we have our first concrete detail. One example of this, is when Victor's friend Michael tells him that if they scowl like the models in magazines, girls will notice them. Victor thinks his friend looks weird, but he tried to scowl, he felt foolish, until out of the corner of his eye he saw a girl looking at him. Soto won. So we've given context, background information. We have paraphrased and quoted this passage, and then we cited the author and the page that it came from. The green part then is our commentary. The purpose of your commentary is to present your analysis of the text. So you would do things like explain what the evidence means, perhaps put it in your own words. You explain why it's important and or how it connects to your topic. That someone is looking at him is no evidence that he is getting positive attention, just that he stands out maybe in a bad way. Even if someone is interested in him in a positive way because of this face, he might not make a real connection because he isn't being himself. So this is author opinion, right? Um, this is your personal or someone's personal analysis or interpretation of the text. So they've used this example of Michael scowling and then explained, you know, maybe people aren't looking at him because they're impressed. Maybe they think he's weird or even if somebody liked his scowl and talked to him, she would pretty soon discover that's like not his normal face, right? And maybe he wouldn't have a real connection because he's not being authentically himself. He's like putting on a face to impress people, right? So is that a plausible interpretation of this part, which supports the theme that it's better to be yourself than try to be someone else? Absolutely. Then because this is a two chunk Schaefer paragraph, we have a second piece of evidence. Later in the story, readers see another example of this theme when Mr. Bueller recalls the time in college that he spent all of his money trying to convince a girl he liked that he was rich. It was fun until he had spent all his money on her and had to write home to his parents because he was broke. Soto 4. So again, we've given some context, paraphrased, quoted, and cited. Then the commentary explains it. And remember, you want your commentary to be at least two sentences. What you write should be longer in total in your paragraph than what you quoted. In Mr. Bueller's attempts to impress this girl, he ended up wasting all of his money and had to ask his parents to help him out. That was bad enough, 
but this girl was undoubtedly the opposite of impressed when she found out that he wasn't who he'd pretended to be, and also that he'd been so dumb to waste all of his money. Right? He specifically says he was trying to convince a girl that he was rich, so I'm sure she wasn't impressed to find out that he wasn't actually rich, right? Um, and so is it possible that then this didn't pan out well for him? I think based on the way he remembers this story, that that's a, a strong possibility. So again, this um, experience that Mr. Bueller had supports the idea that it's better to be yourself than try to be someone else. He didn't get the girl and he wasted all his money. Then your concluding statement reinforces your main idea that you presented in your topic sentence. While the story ends on a high note as Teresa wants to meet up with Victor to study, which could be seen as a positive, right? Readers can predict that she will eventually find out he was just pretending to be a French expert and won't be impressed. So clearly it's better to be yourself than try to be someone else. So they looked at it and said, yeah, maybe it's a happy ending. But ultimately she's probably going to find out that he was just kidding, right? Um, and so then what happens? Is it possible that she's going to be like, why weren't you honest with me? And then we have a problem. Yeah, that's a distinct possibility. So the author has ended here with kind of a prediction about what could come next. So if we were to take this same topic and apply it to an essay instead of just one paragraph, same topic, right? But you begin with an introduction and end with a conclusion. So you're going to use a lot of the same strategies that we've practiced with the Schaefer paragraph, but the formatting is now going to be a little different. An essay takes a little more time to introduce the topic, so you have a full paragraph introduction, and it takes more time to wrap it up. Um, and often you have multiple body paragraphs giving evidence, right? So it, it looks a little bit different. With an essay, we want to begin our introduction not with answering the prompt right away, but first getting the reader's attention. It's a little longer, so you work a little harder to get their attention and make that longer piece of writing worth reading. With a paragraph, it's quick and you just get right to the point, start with your main idea. With an essay, we take a little more time to lead into it, right? So hooks can be lots of different things. It can be questions, quotations, statistics, little story bites or pieces of a narrative, right? All of those are possibilities for how you can get a reader's attention. Typically, when we're writing about literature, we avoid using first and second person pronouns as much as possible um, because we really kind of want to leave ourselves out of it and focus on the text. Um, you don't want to appear to be overly personally invested or biased. Um, and you also don't want to appear too familiar with your reader. So generally, we use third person pronouns in writing about literature, unless, of course, like the prompt specifically mentions you or something. And um, so as an example, this is a quotation that relates to our topic. Bernard M. Barrick famously said, be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. So that's kind of a thought-provoking, interesting quotation, right? You, you look at that chiasmus, that reverse parallelism, and, and think about what that really means. Um, and it's an interesting way to start your essay. Then you have, after your hook, the bridge. And the goal of the bridge is to connect your hook, your attention getter, to your thesis and your topic. If you're writing about literature, you're introducing the text here. If you're writing about a topic, then you want to introduce that topic, give background information, define terms, kind of whatever you think readers need to understand before they look at your explanation or your argument. And um, because topics and prompts vary in complexity, the amount of information that you need to give here kind of varies depending upon your topic. We looked at a sample introduction paragraph last week about dramatic irony. And since dramatic irony is a somewhat more complex topic, it had a slightly longer bridge in which they defined dramatic irony and gave an example of it from another text before talking about irony in Anna of Byzantium, right? So that one was a little longer. In this case, we're really just introducing the short story. So this can be done in a single sentence, but your bridge might be up to three sentences depending upon the complexity of your topic. In this case, we say, 
In Gary Soto's short story, Seventh Grade, the main character, Victor, wants to impress Teresa, but seems to feel that being himself isn't enough. So we have the tag, title, author, genre, and we've introduced the central conflict of the text, um, which lends itself to the theme we've chosen, which is that one theme in this story is that it is better to be yourself than to try to be someone else. Then we have the body paragraph. In this case, the prompt called for a three paragraph essay. So we have just one body paragraph. Your topic sentence should relate very explicitly, specifically, clearly to your thesis. One example of this theme is when Victor's friend Michael tells him that if they scowl like the models in magazines, girls will notice them. That's clearly stating the topic of this paragraph, right? We're going to explain how we see that theme in the text. Our first piece of evidence is about Victor's friend Michael. Um, so then we have our Concrete detail here in red, the commentary exactly the same as the body paragraph. If you were to split this into a four paragraph essay and have multiple body paragraphs, then your second body paragraph might begin something like another example of this theme is when Mr. Bueller recalls his time in college. And then your concrete detail could be uh, something like. Uh, Mr. Bueller remembers trying to convince a girl he liked that he was rich, then you quote and then you cite and explain, right? So um, this could be split into two body paragraphs. As it's done, it's a single body paragraph to fit the prompt. Your concluding uh, paragraph in an essay should begin by restating the thesis. You don't want it to be exactly word for word because um, that's not adding anything um, worthwhile, right? But it should mean effectively the same thing. So in this case, we said, looking at how the character's choices affect their relationships with others, it's clear that one theme in this story is that it is better to be yourself than to try to be someone else. Since both examples from the text have to do with um, how characters' choices affect their relationships with others, we've added that into the thesis to give it a little bit more um, little bit more information based on what you used, right? Then your concluding paragraph summarizes the gist of your argument, right? So we have Victor and Michael both walk through the school looking weird in an attempt to impress their classmates, and Mr. Bueller recalls the time he failed to impress a girl by acting rich. Both of these examples show how pretending to be something you're not can end badly. So we have one sentence summing up the evidence presented, and one sentence summing up how that supports the thesis. And then your concluding statement is sort of a more general, broader statement. It can answer the so what, like why do we care about this topic? Why does it matter? It can include a prediction about what you think will come later or what will happen next. It can be a call to action, what you expect the reader to do or advise them to do. Or it can be a connection to a broader social problem or a greater world issue, something like that. So the way that an essay is organized is you start sort of general with this quotation or question or something that can grab people's attention and pull them in. You narrow your focus down with the bridge that introduces your topic and get very specific with your thesis. This is exactly what I'm going to talk about. Then you have all the details and examples and analysis in the body. Restate your specific thesis, broaden it by generally summarizing your evidence, and end with this broader concluding statement. So they've ended with, to make lasting connections with others. Let others see who you really are, which is a call to action, which theoretically anybody can apply to their life, right? So as you can see, a lot of the strategies that we used with the Schaefer paragraph are still applicable in an essay. You just spend a little more time setting it up and closing it. And then, you know, potentially you have multiple body paragraphs. So you're able to split up different uh, parts of your rationale.